Ever wondered how the science officer on board that spaceship on your favorite TV show knows how many life forms there are on that other planet? Maybe the USS Enterprise is already using 6G. Hello, I'm Michael Hainsworth. We barely just scratched the surface on 5G, and the next generation technology is already being advanced by the people at Nokia Bell Labs. You know, the folks that invented the transistor in 1947, gave us the laser in 1960, and in 1972 introduced the C programming language to the world, the language the world overwhelmingly uses today. This is Peter Vetter. He is the president of Bell Labs Core Research. It's his job to make 6G more than just another G. And while we may not notice the power of 6G on the street, he's going to change the way we work and live. What I see happening five years from now is a increased digital physical fusion, the fusion of, of digital and physical worlds. And, and that will allow us to have a better understanding of what's happening in the physical world and then an anticipate possible needs and uh, augment human capabilities. On this episode of The Network Effect, we'll learn why we need to upgrade to 6G, who benefits, and if we'll ever see the technology in the final frontier. Give me an example of how 6G might work in areas where we never expected it before. Just the idea that you're monitoring how wireless interacts with its environment is fascinating. Yeah, so, so one new capability that uh, we are exploring with 6G is the opportunity to uh, not only communicate or use the radio channel for communication, but also use it as a sensor. Um, I mean, we're, we're familiar with radar uh, at airports. You, you can detect uh, airplanes arriving. It, it can be used for speed detection. Hope you didn't get a speeding ticket. So that these are radar te technologies. But the thing is, you can actually reuse the radio base stations that will be all around us also as a sensor using that radar principle and do that in a way that you don't impair the quality of the, the, the communication at the same time. You're also working with NTT and Docomo and SKT in South Korea? Uh, so, so indeed, uh, to, to make progress in 6G, it's important that we collaborate with partners. Uh, our customers uh, like uh, communication uh, service providers like NTT in Japan and, and uh, Docomo, uh, and then SKT in Korea, indeed, as you mentioned, what we do with them is evaluate what AI can do for the radio air interface. So they're actually evaluating now our proof of concept. Uh, on AI over the radio interface that I mentioned earlier. The the other partnership that I want to mention is our collaboration with Bosch, uh, where we are um, evaluating the radio sensing and joint communication. So we have a first proof of concept to, to show that this can be done for real with a, a standard radio base station, a millimeter wave system. And we're currently testing that in Arena 2036 in Stuttgart. This is an experimental factory where we collaborate with the industry partners like the company Bosch and, and, and they're really evaluating it in and a factory environment and also looking into new use cases like safety. Yeah, well, we spoke to uh, Clemens Ackerman over at Arena 2036 in Germany. He was super excited about the value of 6G in automotive development. And I love the idea that the autonomous robots could use wireless to detect workers in its path without all of that additional gear. Yeah, in, indeed, that is, is one of the use cases. 